Okay, so you cannot have, you cannot be working on speed and uh, bowling, uh, fitness, uh, workload, work capacity, whatever you want to call it, bowling overs in the same block. Okay, just neural confusion uh, and the buildup of fatigue will always uh, be detrimental to your max velocity session. So phase one, block one, on a Monday, you can bowl 12 to 16 balls as fast as you can um, off a full run-up, has to be full run-up, no run and gun short run-up, full run-up, uh, and you get about two to three minutes break between each delivery. I know it's it's mind-blowing, but that speed, okay? Uh, and then if you have a speed gun, you need to be common sense approach that if your pace drops off, you stop it. Okay, it's not a competition who can bowl the most. Okay, there's enough donkeys in the world. Um, but we need a donkey to move a bit faster. Um, and you can do the same on a Thursday. Okay, data shows that that's the recovery if you don't go too much into the bank. But by that, I mean too much fatigue by bowling all day. Yes, you feel great on a Monday. I'm going to keep bowling, bowling. Well, stop. If, if you finish a speed session fatigued, you've not worked on speed. Okay. Then on a Tuesday, and then in the afternoon, you can do some uh, low body work, uh, trap bar deadlift, uh, and depth jumps. There we go. Ten sets total. Awesome. And then on the t and you do the same on a Thursday. Uh, stick to the same uh, exercises as well. Don't keep rotating it. You know what I think about general strength? It is. It's, it's general strength. Okay. So. Um, do the same, become good at uh, trap bar deadlift and depth jumps. Five sets of five on each. Two minutes between each one, awesome. Then on a Tuesday, um, you're now going to work on your um, mag, so power. Okay, so the amount of force and the amount of power uh, you can put behind a ball. So in the morning, I would do some uh, medicine ball work. Uh, and some kneeling constraints. A weighted ball, kneeling constraints, six sets of 10, 300 gram ball. Then in the afternoon, you can do upper body strength. So incline press and chins, or a row or push press, go heavy, you know, go heavy or go home. You can do an isometrics if you want to do isometrics. It is my preferred method, but uh, I know a lot of people don't, are not ready to take that leap yet. What? So bowl and isometrics, that's it. That is the future. And then exigent suit in between. And then on Wednesday, um, nothing, stretch, yoga, prehab, whatever, swim. Then on the Thursday, we repeat that process. Rate 12, 16 balls in the afternoon, uh, trap bar deadlift or lunge, whatever, uh, and depth jumps. Then on Friday, we repeat that process. Med ball, med ball, a good, like, 200 reps on of med ball on a Tuesday and a Friday, so rotation, overhead, chest pass, uh, some of those exercises where you're lengthening the spine, so you're up in a kneeling crunch position and perturbations with medicine balls or aqua bags, okay? Um, and then on a Saturday, you can do some whatever, medicine ball, jumps, uh, just a power circuit, and then Sunday rest. You do that for two to three weeks. Up to you. Okay, and then the next phase, so block two, now you're focusing on um, more magnitude, more power in a uh, in the delivery, in the action. So run and gun session. So take direction out of it. Okay, so in the first block, we're working on rate with direction uh, off a full run. But this one, weighted ball, work on magnitude, power, 260 gram ball, bowl into a net as fast as you can, a short run up, making sure the last three strides, the penultimate stride, the impulse stride into back foot contact, you're going through quickly. If you want to do assisted work, get someone to pull you through with a band or uh, awesome because that then increases the force on front foot contact. Uh, if you've got exogen, then that's awesome. Uh, four Seagulls Masterton's acceleration. Acceleration is taken care of by uh, assisted. 
uh, mass is taken care of by uh, oxygen suit. Okay, so that's that. In the afternoon, I would then actually do, um, again, lower body. So do some dumbbell jump squats, uh, some uh, long jumps, but more uh, magnitude dominant jumps. So tuck jumps, great stuff. So hurdle jumps, uh, that sort of stuff. So I don't know, 50, 60 ground contacts. Then on, uh, so that's magnitude day. Then on a Tuesday, I would do, um, so now we're on duration. So now this is your bowling. So this is tempo bowling. Like I've said, in a game, okay, most bowlers are bowling, tempo bowling, okay, because you're only running in at 70% of your match speed. Uh, so do that for a, a full run, full run with a normal cricket ball. Uh, you can put a stump, you can put a marker down there in tent because the brain likes it when they're in the tent and that's in the center of Franz Bosch's layering of specificity. So put cones down or bowling master or whatever. Uh, and then bowl, what, five, six overs, 70%, okay? Uh, work on uh, tactical awareness, work on slow balls. There's a direct correlation between your run-up speed and the stress. It's called a uh, player load in catapult. So the higher the player load, the less, okay, you, you, less of those you want to do per week and that's correlated with uh, run-up speed um, so do uh, five or six overs get a good sweat on if you want to jog down and get the ball that's fine but then you bowl six balls then you have a rest for two minutes do some fielding um, and then go again five or six overs and then in the afternoon again we're back to upper body then aren't we so i would do maybe actually bodybuilding I, I don't mind that because you're on a duration day, so maybe some, uh, not so much uh, at the front. So uh, I would work on uh, lap pull downs, rope, uh, rope, uh, rows, seated rows, uh, triceps, biceps, uh, 20 sets in total, get a good pump on. And then on the Tuesday, on the Wednesday, go for a run, 30, 40 minutes aerobic run. Uh, don't don't stress. You should be able to talk when you go in round 30, 40. Get out outside, not on a cardio or a stupid bike. Get some uh, repetition. Get some tendon stiffness going. Uh, and then on the Thursday, we repeat it again. So Thursday would be weighted ball, run and gun. In the afternoon, uh, dumbbell jump squats, some tuck jumps. Uh, and then uh, remember your hamstrings as well, but hamstrings uh, train them isometrically. So the, the glute bridges with a barbell, so you're holding it, whether that's isodynamic, so you've got a concentric, then a hold at the top for 10 seconds, come down, that sort of stuff. Again, sort of 15 to 20 sets. And then on, um, on the Friday, uh, we repeat it again. We do uh, tempo bowling and then uh, bodybuilding in the afternoon, maybe do some shoulders or whatever, do some core, but no stress about it. Saturday, I would have rest. Sunday would have rest, okay? And then you repeat the cycle. Go back to uh, rate and magnitude for two weeks and then repeat it after that. Go to magnitude and duration. Hopefully that makes sense, but don't confuse the system. You cannot bowl flat out uh, for a long time yeah but in a game you bowl uh, no okay it's it doesn't work like that let the competition take care of that pre-season games okay this is training to push your top end speed up um and uh bear in mind i just put a post on instagram as well so a knee dominant magnitude bowler will fatigue quicker okay so with that by that i mean being fascia tendon driven you know them Joffre Archer Craig Dorado uh, no muscle on them at all fascia allows them to cheat movement okay their ground contact time is really short so muscle doesn't work so it's all tendons that's why they're bouncy because it's tendons uh, but a knee dominant bowler because you're spending more time on back foot for whatever reason 
that's how you're built. You've got more type 2A fibres or you've done too much of a certain drill which asks you to pre-turn and sit on your back leg and massive knee flexion. That will create a knee dominant pattern, okay? Um, you will fatigue quicker because you haven't, you're on the ground contact so long, it now becomes about muscle. Um, uh, the muscles have to work harder because you haven't got the help from the tendons. So be careful uh, with knee dominant bowlers. Don't over bowl yourself, but equally with, well, everyone don't over bowl yourself, but let the spinners do that. Uh, but equally the hip dominant guys will over bowl because it's so easy for them. Uh, they bounce, a lot, uh, bounce along like a kangaroo and it's easy to bowl quickly. And they go in, they keep them going, bowl long spells. Uh, but then uh, you're going to fatigue because it'll, you just hit the wall. And it's not that, it's not at that time you'll be fatigued. You're going to regret it in about two or three days time where injuries happen and stress fractures and stuff happen. Okay.